Hello and welcome to another installment of AA Computers and Technology and today I am incredibly excited to make this video because I've been wanting to make it for the past couple weeks. Now a few videos ago I told you guys I ordered something pretty pricey off eBay uh, and you know when it was shipping I did have a couple regrets because for the money I could have actually bought two uh, Western Digital Red hard drives uh, with probably around a two terabyte capacity each and solved my backup problem. Um, so you know I was like oh I should have just bought the hard drives and not bought this because this is kind of a novelty item uh, and then it's kind of not uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring it over and show you guys what I bought and here it is guys I bought a Nixie clock <laughs> And I just had to have it. A couple months ago, I was watching Tomorrowland, and there was a scene uh, where right behind George Clooney, there was actually like a 12-digit Nixie clock, and it looked so cool. Uh, so I went onto the internet, entered in a bunch of absurd, you know, search terms because I didn't actually know it was called a Nixie clock. I'll, I'll post uh, I'll post some of the search terms on my website. And by the way, I actually have gone all the images uh, and the article itself on the website in advance of this video. I'm actually pretty impressed with myself. So go ahead and check that out. Link will be in the description. Now after I figured out what it was, I went on to Amazon, typed in Nixie 2 clock into the search bar, and was incredibly disappointed when I saw the prices exceeded $300. That was way, way, way out of my budget. So I hopped onto eBay, typed in the same search term, and I found that they were a bit cheaper on eBay as expected. Um, but yeah, they were still way out of my price range at around $150 to $170. Uh, the four-digit ones were a bit cheaper. Uh, they were, you know, right below the $100 mark, but I still, uh, I just really wanted the six-digit Nixie clock because I like the constant motion of the uh, two second digits. Uh, on, am I pointing to the right place? Yeah, the two second uh, digits. I just had to have that constant motion effect, uh, and the four-digit Nixie just wouldn't do that for me. Um, so I went back to eBay every uh, couple days or so to check if anything else popped up. And after searching for two to three months, I finally ran across this kit. And after I found this, I kept going back to it every few days and I finally decided to pull the trigger and buy it. It was right below the $90 budget that I had in PayPal. Uh, and it actually got here fairly quick. This is all the way from Hong Kong. Got here in uh, pretty much a week, I think. So that is a uh, pretty quick shipping for something from China. No guys, the acrylic case did not come with that. I actually bought this separately off Amazon. It wasn't too much, it was like $7. Um, and that's to prevent me from ac accidentally touching uh, a place on the board where there's high voltage because these tubes are being driven by, I think around 140 volts. Now there's not much current behind that, but if you put your hand behind it and accidentally touch it, uh, you, will go, you will get a little zap. So uh, it's better to have this uh, little acrylic case. Before I go any further with this video, let me go ahead and explain what exactly a Nixie 2 is. Now, I am no Nixie Tube expert, so if you find something wrong with this information, feel free to point it out in the comments section. I just did some research on the internet, and now I'm just relaying it back to you guys. So, uh, inside these tubes, you have low-pressure neon gas, usually paired with some other gas, such as argon. Um, it's using a cold cathode, so these actually don't draw uh, very much power at all. With all six digits installed, the entire clock draws uh, only a few watts. Now, each number has its own digit inside the clock. It goes from zero all the way up to nine, so you have a total of 10 digits plus a decimal point, uh, because these are the IN-12 B tubes. Uh, the IN 12A tubes do not have a decimal point in them. And when you put electricity through uh, a specific number, that number lights up. And because of the different positions of the numbers inside the tube, it creates this really cool 3D effect. And I like how we are looking at a clock and you can see every time I cut the video to go do something else. Uh, but these are actually a really neat piece of history as well. Uh, I believe the Nixie tubes were first introduced in 1955 and they no longer manufacture them. Now you will still find them all over the internet because there is a ton of stock left. And you could probably get six of these like I have here for around 15 bucks to play around with. Um, I believe uh, these particular tubes were manufactured in Russia, hence the uh, big CCP uh, logo on the side of each tube. Besides this one right here, this is a different tube. Now, uh, five of these are the same, and then one's different, which you will see in just a minute when I uh, actually give you guys a close-up of the clock. I feel like that is definitely enough background. Let's go ahead and get on with the rest of the video. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the unboxing of all the clock components. I'll show you the entire assembly process. And then at the end of the video, I will reflect on what I like and don't like about this particular Nixie clock kit. So let's go ahead and get started. 
Okay, so I just picked this up from the post office and I am incredibly worried because it feels really light. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and open it up on camera. Not really sure how to uh, tackle this here though. And I guess I was so relieved that there was actually stuff in the box, I decided to stop talking here. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch into voiceover mode. So that section wrapped up in bubble wrap actually had all of the components in it, the Nixie tubes and everything else, such as all the transistors and surface mounted components. And then right below that, you can see the board. Uh, and it was really hard to get the board out. It was stuck in the box pretty good, uh, fit the exact dimensions of the box. So uh, yeah, as you can see, I gave up on that. I just pushed it to the side and saved it for later. Gonna open up the bag with everything else in it. And overall, I was very happy with how they packaged it. Okay, so in the bag I'm holding now, you can see all six of the Nixie tubes. And in this bag, we have all of the components that I have to solder to the board. All right, right now let's go into ghetto macro mode and take a look at all the components. You can see the Nixie tubes right now and that one with the white studs uh, is the one that's different from all of the other tubes. And upon first glance, they all look good. There is the microcontroller right there. And then you can see all of the other various components, transistors, uh, surface mounted resistors and diodes, the sockets for the chips etc etc uh, you can also see the mounting posts for the nixie clock and there's the board itself and as far as quality goes i was pretty impressed with everything This project was really just for me. I want to sit back, relax, and build this clock. So I haven't really been doing updates, but I'm really far into the project now, and I thought I would go ahead and give you guys a update right now. Uh, I'm kind of tired. I've been doing this all day. I've probably been working on this project for, uh, God, maybe six hours now. And the reason why is because there's a bunch, uh, a bunch of surface mount Oh my goodness, come on focus. All right, I'm gonna switch this over to manual because uh, the focus just doesn't wanna cooperate here. But there are a bunch of surface mount resistors and dire, uh, diodes on here and it took me forever to individually sol uh, solder every single one to the board and it was incredibly frustrating doing so. Uh, we're gonna go back into uh, ghetto, uh, I guess ghetto macro mode here and check everything out. And you can see I already went ahead, uh, put the microcontroller in, and we are getting something out of it. So I'm going to start installing the Nixie tubes here in a second. 
Um, but you can see my progress so far. The thing is pretty much complete. The power supply that I intended on using is apparently dead, which I, I didn't realize until I plugged it in and nothing happened and it scared the crap out of me. Um, but yeah, that power supply is dead, so I'm going to have to find another 12 volt power supply to uh, power this little clock. So that's going to be a little adventure too. I'm going to go ahead and get the Nixie tubes on here and get back to you guys. I think I have met my match. Look at these, those little white specks you see in front of you. And just for a size comparison, here is my finger. Those little white specks are the LEDs that I have to mount onto the, or behind the Nixie tubes. So I have no idea how I am going to do that. I might just submit them all together because that is going to be an absolute pain. Look how small they are. Oh my God, that's going to be ridiculous. Ah. Uh. Ah, it's getting very late, but I am determined to finish this clock before I go to bed. And yes, I know I keep swapping out cameras on you guys. The uh, Nikon D3300 is not mine. It's someone else's camera, and they had to go off and use it right now. So I swap back to my Pentax Q. As you can see, we have four out of these six Nixie tubes mounted right now. I have two more left to go, and that's just the seconds. And that's actually my favorite part. Uh, part of the clock. That's why I ordered the six-digit Nixie. Uh, I could have gotten the four-digit Nixie for much cheaper, but I just had to have the uh, continuous uh, seconds over here. And this is actually the uh, most frustrating part <laughs> of the video so far. Actually, mounting the LEDs was the most frustrating part. I take that back. Uh, but this is uh, right behind that because I have to keep checking for continuity uh, continuity on every single mount because sometimes uh, these solder joints right here just don't take it's kind of awkward uh, so yeah it's just eating up time and I only have two more left to go this is probably the last update before the clock will be done and hopefully everything turns out all right and it is done I'm gonna go ahead and clean everything up and continue this video tomorrow it turned 4 o'clock and I noticed that the second hour digit went out and as you can see all of them work except for 4. Let me go back around. 1, 2, come on, 3, nothing. So either this is a bad tube or I messed up on my soldering in the back so I'm going to go back, reflow everything and then check again, and if not, I'm going to be kind of angry, and I'm going to send the seller an email asking for another tube. Yep, I checked the continuity, and there was a bad connection, so I went ahead and resoldered it, and now everything is working fine. I hope you enjoyed that little montage. Now it's time for my final thoughts. Overall, I felt like this was a pretty challenging kit to assemble. There were a lot of curveballs here and there, and this is definitely something you don't want to tackle as your first project if you have no experience with stuff like this. I have assembled a couple kits in the past, so I could take those skills and transfer it over to this, uh, but I would not, I would not tackle this as your first electronics project. Now, this little manual right here that they emailed me was an absolute lifesaver. It has a ton of diagrams, a ton of detailed pictures, uh, a parts list, etc, uh, etc. Et uh, some of the English is a bit broken, so you'll have to get past that. But besides that, I mean, this thing was super helpful. Uh, and I will actually post the entire PDF on my website so you guys can check it out. Uh, the link will be in the description. I'm very happy with the way this kit turned out. As you can see, there are some rough edges here and there. That's really my fault. I had some issues mounting the Nixie tubes and one of the neon bulbs, so they came out a tad bit crooked. Uh, but besides that, I mean, this thing is absolutely stunning. It's a beautiful clock. Uh, it's been keeping track of time great. I haven't even had to calibrate it yet. It's on sync with the clock on my computer. And the software is really easy to use and intuitive. Now I do have two very small issues with this clock. The first 
one is the software can be a bit buggy. Uh, it is easy to use, but sometimes it will completely lock up when you try to set the clock, especially in 12 hour mode, 24 hour mode's a bit better. Uh, and when that happens, you have to unplug the clock and plug it back in. The second issue I have with this clock uh, is that there are no mounting posts for the Nixie tubes. You have to solder them directly to the board. I would have appreciated it if this kit came with the mounting posts, because then if you ever have to replace a bulb, you can just pull it out and then put a new one in. With this, you have to actually unsolder everything, remove the bulb, put a new bulb in, and then solder everything back on. Uh, so that's not really a big deal. It's just a convenience factor. All right, so that's gonna be about it for this video. And if I had to do it all over again, I would definitely buy this clock. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video, and of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. The link for the seller of this clock will be in the description. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology.